Hi guys, so today we have this Iowa stereo cassette deck. The model number is AD-WX929. Now this one is a nice cassette deck, this. it's uh, It's got a lot of features on this. Both decks feature auto reverse. Both decks feature record, which is uh, is unusual for twin decks. Mostly uh, on a twin deck, you'd have one record and one playback only, unless it's uh, quite a high-end machine. Both decks have, as I said, record. Both decks are HX Pro. It's Dolby HX Pro, which is the headroom extension. Um, again, you have that on recording decks, so it's not unusual that it would be on both of these decks, since they both record. Dolby B and C noise reduction is available on this machine. So there's also these two buttons here, data one and data two. This relates to deck one and deck two. And this is Iowa's own bias control system. So you may have heard some other bias control names from different decks. Some of them say calibration or auto calibrate. Some of them say just bias adjustment. This one's called data system, but it does the same thing. And the way this works is when you put a tape into the machine, it automatically recognizes the tape type. So that's um, ferric or chrome or metal. And that will set the bias to a standard calibration, depending on what that tape type is. But the way that the auto bias control works is that even between tapes of the same type, so if you have two chrome tapes from different manufacturers, they will have slightly different characteristics. And the way this works is it will record a section of tape. Now this is a, it's not a three head tape deck. So what it has to do is when you put a tape in and you press one of these buttons, it will record a few seconds and it puts um, a test tone on there from one of the built-in oscillators. So it's 400 Hertz and 10 kilohertz, I think. Mm -hmm. And it will record a few seconds of that, rewind the tape, play it back, and determine the tape type um, based on the playback that it gets. And then it will set the BIOS um, according to that. So every tape that you put in, you press that button. You don't have to do it, but you'll get the best recording if you do do that. And it will, uh, will set the BIOS correctly for that tape. This deck has the advantage that it has a built-in battery, so even when the deck's powered off, power it back on again, come back to it with the same tape, it will remember that um, setting that it had last time. So it's quite a good feature. The, with a three-head deck, it doesn't need to do the rewind, so with a three-head cassette deck, it can record and play back in the one tape direction in a single take. This one, uh, because it's only got the, the one head, it has to rewind playback again. Now, although this deck is in very good cosmetic condition, there's hardly any marks on it at all, it does have a fault. Um, now I've already had a look inside this and the belts have deteriorated, so I think that's what, uh, I think that's all it needs is new belts. So we will uh, we'll probably do that in this video. What else to talk about on the front? Not much, to be honest. I'll switch it on. You can hear what happens to this. So we get rather an ugly noise from it. Um, and that is just the wheels turning with bits of the old belt on it. So I'm hoping there's nothing else more wrong with this than uh, just the belts. Nice display on this. Soft open doors. They're not motorized, but um, that's okay. There is a, I don't know if you can just see that, there's a stabilizing panel in here as well. A lot of the higher end decks had this stabilizer inside and it's basically a sprung loaded panel which keeps the tape secure in the in the player. So this uh, the panel will just put pressure on that cassette shell and uh, keep it from moving around. So what we'll do is I'll take the lid off this and we'll uh, take a look inside. So here we are inside the cassette deck. Everything looks quite nicely laid out in here. It looks easy to get to everything. Some of these cassette decks, you open them up and they're just a mass of wires and uh, you've got to remove bits and pieces before you can get to things, but everything looks fairly simple in here. Um, looks as though everything is on the front panel. So these cassette decks here, looks as though what we need to do is unbolt the front panel. I'm expecting this front panel will just 
lay down and we can uh, get access to these cassette decks and remove them if necessary. Hardly any wires in here. Um, we've got the main connection here to the front. So it looks as though that is the pretty much the only one. So we've got these shielded cables here, these ones and these ones. These will be from the heads themselves. They're always uh, shielded cables back to the board. But other than that, there's one here, just a three pin one. I'm not sure what that is. But other than that, this ribbon cable here looks to be about 15, 20 conductors in there. And that is supplying the front panel. So all the buttons, the display, and also the control cables, these black ones here, these control cables back to the uh, cassette decks. So the motor and the switches and the contacts, etc. But yeah, it's, uh, it's fairly good. So I think if we disconnect this cable and disconnect the head cables, unbolt the front, I think this will just fold down and we can uh, get a full access to here. And we'll take a look at these capstan rollers. Might be able to see the belts are just missing. It's, uh, it's just turned to that uh, horrible goopy stuff on the, on the rollers. Not much else to talk about in here. This is uh, unusual. This is um, a 64-pin package here, and it's labelled Dolby. I've not seen a Dolby package like that before. They've always been the smaller IC standards. So um, I'll, I'll I'll find out what this is, and I'll I'll post it up on the on the screen. But uh, yeah, I'm assuming this is just Dolby noise reduction, probably HX Pro in there as well. Hmm, just not uh, seen that before. Perhaps it's just a slightly more modern cassette deck that I'm used to. Anyway, I will uh, unbolt the front, we'll lay it down, and we'll uh, take a look at these capstan rollers in a bit more detail. Yeah, so as thought, this just unclipped. Basically, there was a few screws underneath. There's a clip on each end. Disconnect these cables. So there's three main cables, the two shielded ones, and this ribbon cable here. There's also this small three pin one, this extra one on the end. But other than that, um, this whole panel just comes straight off. And as you can see, if we want to remove this cassette deck, there's just four screws and we can pull that whole deck out of there. I'm not sure that's necessary though to do the belts. We just need to remove this motor plate here and, uh, and get to the belts. But as you can see, if I move that, wheel around you can see there's bits of belt on it it's getting on my fingers it's uh it's just turned to mush that uh, that belt as they do over time and exactly the same with the other one as well so that noise you could hear before when we fired up the deck and it was making that rattling noise it was the motor itself so the bit of the belt is stuck around the motor spindle and you could just hear that uh bit of belt sort of smacking onto the side as it uh, as it rotated so i'm hoping that's all this is is belts so i will get the belts ordered and we'll uh, we'll fit those and hopefully this is back to working state again but yeah i think this might be one of the best decks i've worked on in terms of ease you know you take this panel off and you can get to everything so easily so just in case you've not seen one of these before the belts in this condition as i said the belts just sort of over time they just turn to liquid just sort of a, a mushy goo on the roller and the the way to remove this is just get something flat against the roller and you can just wind it round and just scoop off that belt if you get it on your fingers it's uh, it's quite messy You can still see there's some residue on there, but um, a cotton wool bud and some alcohol will remove the rest of that. See there, just this uh, gloopy mess.
is just messy stuff. And then what I do after that is I'll get some tissue or some cotton wool buds and just get some isopropyl alcohol and just clean off the uh, the rest of that. You can see that's coming off there. It's with some IPA. Just takes a little bit of time. You just got to be patient and make sure all of that is off. If there's anything left on there, obviously with it being sticky, that's going to cause problems when you get your new belts on. So I'll go ahead and clean these off and then we'll uh, wait for those belts to arrive. Well, I think I'm going to take back what I said before about this being one of the best decks to work on. The actual mechanism itself came out really easily. Um, there is just four screws and this mechanism basically just comes straight out of the front panel. And if you look at the front, it gives great access to all of the playback mechanism here, the pinch rollers, the playhead, the erase head, all of the tape path, and that can all be cleaned along with the capstan rollers. Um, also, the front here where this mechanism moves up and down the heads, we can regrease these pieces here. So this plate here that rubs against this metal plate, this needs a little bit of grease on. It actually feels quite good. I haven't regreased this yet, but I might do. If this grease was bad then um, and it gone hard and got dust in it, then you'd need to clean this off with some IPA and put some more grease on there. This one actually feels very free. It's also a little mechanism at the bottom here that moves the head round. So let's look at the head here. See that flip round, that's for the auto reverse. And again, this if this was stiff and didn't work properly, then you'd need to regrease those gears as well. But this all looks pretty good. The bad thing about it is the belt replacement. It's not very straightforward. So this motor assembly was, was on here. And this just comes off. So this gives access to the capstan rollers and putting a new capstan belt on here is not a problem. The, it goes around the motor spindle here and then also around these two. That's easy enough. But there is also another belt which is deteriorated underneath here. Now this belt goes around the capstan. There's a there's a, um, a pulley underneath this capstan which I can get to because the, the belt can just go around here. The problem is getting it onto this pulley here. Now, the problem is I can't get to the top of it. Now, it looks as though the, the way it should be done is this board needs to be removed. There's actually a, you can't see here, but there's a switch underneath here um, stopping the belt just covering this whole area. It needs to uh, Basically, you'll see when this board is off, but I need to lift this board and then put the belt on. Now, this board coming off is not straightforward because uh, it's soldered here onto these solenoids. And the solenoids are attached to the mechanism. So I'm going to have a look and see if there's an easier way of doing it. But it looks as though we need to just unsolder these two solenoids and then lift the board off and that should give us the access we need to this but uh, I haven't got the belts yet so I'll wait till the belts arrive and then I will take a look see what the easiest way of doing that is but I've already cleaned up all of the rollers this one here was the uh, this was causing the noise that you heard before I had a big piece of belt stuck on here that was uh, flapping around clean these rollers clean this one so yeah, hopefully it's just uh, it's just these solder joints that need removing, and then we can uh, lift that board off. So 
So with those solenoids desoldered, this should just lift off. There's a couple of plastic supports on the back of here. There might be a little touch of glue on there. Just got to be careful because I think these plastic parts are going to be quite brittle. Yeah, there is a little bit of glue on there. It's this post here. So that's it. So the part that I was trying to get past here, and the reason why this needed to be unsoldered is this switch here. See this small leaf switch? This sits in the channel here on this part, which moves left and right, and then makes the, the contact on this switch. And with that, with that sandwiched in the middle of here, there was no way to get the belt through there. So as far as I can tell, this is the only way of replacing the belt. So now with that off, this belt can literally just be lifted over this part here. So we'll put it around the capstan. If you, if you look underneath, there's the, the pulley that it needs to sit into. Just there. So put this round the capstan. it so you can see it's sat in the channel under there and it goes around this cog there and now this can go back on the as I said before the capstan belt itself is uh, is really easy that just sits on the top of here but this one is uh, yeah it's quite a tricky belt replacement that normally they they don't make it that difficult I mean, it's not it's not too difficult. It's literally just those four solder joints, but you normally wouldn't expect to uh, have to unsolder parts to uh, to get the belt in. The only thing to be aware of when you put this back is just make sure that that switch sits in the centre of this channel. If it goes to one side or the other, it's not going to work properly.
So as said, just make sure that this piece here is correctly lined up with the switch. And also on the other side here, there are little micro switches on the edge of the board underneath these levers here. These levers uh, sit on the top of the tape shell and um, drop into the relevant holes on the tape, whether the record tab is out or uh, tape type as well. That's what these are for. So just make sure that they're they're free. They're not jammed up. You haven't um, got it jammed when uh, putting the board back on. But as long as they all move like this, then you're good. Okay, so we need to put the belt on the capstans now. So the belt goes around this one. And then the motor needs to drop in on this side of the belt. So We can just, sorry, it's not easy to uh, see that on the camera, but I'm basically just hooking that belt around the motor pulley. And then dropping that back down into its position. Okay, which is there. So that's how it should look there. The belt comes around from the motor, around the larger capstan, goes over the top of the smaller capstan, back to the motor pulley. The way to check on an auto reverse deck that you've got these things correct is that they should run in opposite directions. So we can see if I'm turning this top one anti-clockwise, the bottom capstan is turning clockwise. And that's the way they should be in an auto reverse deck. They're always opposite. If you put the belt round the wrong way, if this belt came down and round this pulley, they'd both be turning in the same direction. So I'll do the same with the other one and I can put them back into the deck. Just wanted to quickly show you another good feature of this deck from a servicing point of view, is that this is one of the only decks I know of where the cables are long enough where you can get the entire mechanism out of the machine and it's still fully functional. So this is the lead for the playheads. So this is a little bit shorter. If you needed to do an azimuth adjustment or something outside of the deck, then uh, this isn't quite as good. In terms of actually running the deck, so checking the belts were okay, lubricating the mechanism, making sure it was all working okay, this is a really good thing. So I'll just show you, you can literally throw a tape in and operate the mechanism like that, completely outside of the deck, which I think is, uh, is pretty good. You can see the auto reverse. Just flips the head round. So yeah, these are really good decks uh, to work on. So what I'm going to quickly do now, I won't do it on camera because you've seen it before. I'm going to clean the tape heads, I'll adjust the azimuth, and I will set the speed as well. So the speed, as you've seen before, is on the uh, back of the motor there. There's a speed control adjustment hole. You just put a small screwdriver in there and you can adjust the speed. 
So let me do all that, I'll put it together, and we will give it a try. So that's this cassette deck finished. I've replaced the belts, which was the main cause of the problems. I've also cleaned it up, lubricated the deck, demagnetized the heads, cleaned the heads, and, um, and tested it out. Um, Quality-wise, it's, it's really, really nice. What I'll do is I'll just quickly show you the calibration system on this. So as I said, um, we've got data, data one, data two. It says up there, data system. That's, I was bias trim system. And I'll just show you what that looks like. Basically put a blank tape in. And then we press data one. So it's telling you that it's doing the bias. What it's doing now is recording a small piece of the tape with its test tones. Then it will rewind it, play it back, make its adjustments, which is the set. And then it will just quickly play it again, just to make sure that that setting is correct. And that's it. So now it says tuned in the window and this tape is now calibrated for recording so it'll give the best response possible for that tape. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have please give it a like for me and I will see you on the next one.